just to show you here, again, this is the pro rip, the pro rip, um, program. It does, it was, the software was provided for me, um, when I purchased the printer, the software here, um, it already came, you know, with the inches and everything set up for me, but just to kind of show you these three little lines here, you would select, you can change the units. So it already has it set up to inches, but as you see, you can also change it to millimeters and centimeters. It does already have it set up for the language to be English, but as you also see, because this is a um, China-based comp company, they also do have um, Chinese up here as well. As for whatever size sheet you're using, so if you were happening to be using, you know, in my case, I have what's supposed to be A3, paper um when i compare it to my um 11 by 17 paper is actually um maybe about 12 inches instead of the 11 but it is um shorter than the 17 so i have my papers measured about 12 by 16 and i haven't really messed up with those dimensions so far um but either way if you needed to change the dimensions of your um like canvas area design area this square right here two-sided arrow is where you would change the the canvas dimensions here again as i say i have about 12 and i have about 16 by 5 but i probably should just put it back to 16 just to keep myself on the safe side um here the little mountain the picture icon like we tend to have and on our phones and stuff that's how you would insert um import your pictures um i guess you know one of the ones that we tend to see the ain't no family like the little uh reunion shirts we have there importing that image and you see the image comes in really quickly now it does look like it fits within my canvas but just to be on the safe side I can um, resize here you see this lovely two bar that kind of pops up here as long as the lock is here it will keep the dimensions proportioned of course, I can click on it and unlock it and then just change one side over the other. I will keep it proportioned, so I will keep it locked. Um, if I go back and I just say proportion, then I make this one at 10. Then as you see, it changes that to about 12.8, 12.1 and round up. Um, here, the bottom, that's what's flipping uh, the horizontal mirroring. Of course, just like, you know, sublimation and stuff, you would um, mirror your image for the print. So I mirrored my image here for DTF. We still have to have the image to go um, to be mirrored because you are going to flip it back onto the shirt to um, to press. So, you know, that is why you're going to mirror. The ink is going to go directly to the film. If you do not know, that's what DTF stands for, directly to film or direct to film. Um here we do have our print and on the left hand side here is where um, there's like two buttons where you can either push it back or allow it to go forward. So I am going to just push it forward here again. Like I said, I was using an old print, but it did at least I don't know if you can kind of see those lines there, but it did at least give me just a brief um, printing so I can see the lines of a normal head cleaning. And I would just say that this was a good print um i will give it some i just want you to see me do the the print and then we can um go from there and um hopefully that you have the patience because you know with this dtf print it does take a little second to um to print um it can be a little lengthy in time Okay, so again, I'm not working with the roll, so I just have the film. Now, even though I did just put it in like a normal printer, you do have to push the button on the side to feed it forward at least one time to feed it forward. Because if not, that printer will just that excuse me, that film will just sit in that tray per se. Um, but when I insert it here, you can see now the the film has come in. And now it's close enough now in, in comparison to the inks to start printing. So we have our design. We're going to hit rip. Now I already have it set up for it to go to the printer. 
of my selection. I don't touch any of this. This was all set up from the beginning, but I do at least have it clicked for automatic rip or excuse me, automatically print after the rip. So I'm just going to hit print is going to send it. As you see, it says, well, it's supposed to say ripping, <laughs> but it says ripening. <laughs> but that's where it's going to go ahead and, um, you know, send that transmission over to the printer. Once that goes to 100%, then it will start printing, which I think is pretty cool. And once it prints, then I will add the powder and add it to, um, in this case, my heat press. I do not have an oven, but I do have um, my heat press that I slide the image under. So as you see, it's at 100%, and I'm not sure if you can hear, but the printer started making noise. And I love the fact that I can actually lift up my printer and watch it print. So if you see the black, it will start off with the black. And in just a second, you should start seeing the white go underneath, or excuse me, on this tape, on this case, it will be on top of from this angle. See that white that's starting to come along? That is where the, the white comes on top of the, um, the image so that when you lay it onto a shirt, it will be able to be seen through. So there's that. Hopefully this is not too long of a print because it is um, just the two colors. So that is that. I'm gonna let that go ahead and start printing. I'm gonna turn my heat press on. Um, I'll let my heat press go to, um, I do let it go to about 300 degrees because I'm going to use that to press anyway. And then I set the timer to 200 seconds. Um, so yeah, I do it for about 300 degrees and I have my timer set for 200 seconds. This is for the curing, excuse me, this is for the curing of the um, DTF of that powder onto the ink. This is not for the press itself, but this is just for that powder to be absorbed into the ink. Um, I give it about 200 seconds, um, again, at 300 degrees. I have seen it where people have had it at a lower temperature um, with the same time, but in, in my case, I haven't had any issues. So I will just go ahead and um, do that. Okay, and that's heating up. I have it where my heat press is, um, all the way loosened so it doesn't even touch the bottom of the press currently i have it all the way loosened so that um you know when i have it closed it still leaves a little gap in between my um in between the the bottom of the heat press and the the plate itself so if you can kind of see this see here i have a Thin little opening here, you can kind of see straight back to the back. And this here, so I just slide my um, the, the bottom out, put the film here, and then slide it back in. It doesn't touch. Now, if I happen to move too fast, moving too fast, you know, does kind of lift up that film and it can have it touch the top plate of the heat press. But um, I have learned if I just do the draw, then it can just. Um, slide out and it doesn't touch and it, it works perfectly. So I am just waiting for that to continue to print out. Hmm. Let me turn my camera around so you can see, I'm sorry. Um, Facebook, um, yes, you can find me on Facebook and then you can also on Facebook, I also have a free craft group called Crafty Kita's Crafters Cove. It is a multi-specialty group. It is a multi-specialty group. Even though I do specialize in supplementation and now getting into DTF, um, the group is offered for all specialties. Um, I'm not just looking in it to be supplementation, even though a lot of the work that I do share is supplementation. But um, most of my work here, um, I'm, I'm willing to try anything. I'm willing to step into, you know, any craft that I'm, I'm able to do, you know, so I love to share things onto my, um, in the craft group, anyone is open to share. We do have very well-known moderators in there. 
um, well, I wouldn't say well known, but I would say well knowledge. That's what I meant to say. Well knowledge, you know, um, moderators in there, anyone's willing to ask questions, anyone's willing to answer the questions for you. Every so often we do do like little trivia. Um, I am about to get back into the, um, you know, uh, giving out giveaways for um, the most active people in my group. Um, school is about to start up, so every once in a while I, I may have blinks and stuff. I still do have a lot of blinks from graduation time, and I might just try to purge that out with doing some type of sale or so. But either way, um, again, I'm just inviting you to the community. So obviously I know a lot of people do a lot of different crafts and groups and stuff like that. But if you are interested, again, keep Crafty Keters, um, Crafters Cove is on Facebook free multi-craft group please be welcome to, to join um looks like we're almost done i'm just waiting for it to come through we're almost done there any other crafters out there i know a lot of you joined in with this being a um, dtf tutorial but um if there's anyone else out there who does any other crafts i would love to you know just find out what you do. You know, I'm always looking for new people to learn from as much as I'm always looking to teach. So come through, come through. We are almost done. I'm excited. This is fun. <laughs> this is really fun. I got my baby in here. She's supposed to be my cameraman for the day, but um, somehow I wound up holding my own camera through this process. <laughs> You'll hold it for me in just a second when we do this powder, because I can't do both at the same time. Um, but um, I did get the printer, if anyone's interested. I got the printer from ProColor.com. Um, um, they do offer several different sizes. As you can see, I have this right in the home. Um, it is pretty large, but it's not something that's too big that you can't, um, you know, actually have it in your home to, to, to do stuff. Oh, snap, we almost done. I get so excited when I see this stuff go through. So please forgive me. But I mean, if you don't love what you do, you know, what's the point of doing it? And I want you to know I do love what I do. I get frustrated sometimes, <laughs> but I do love what I do. So, oh, snap. Let me show y'all. You can see that's the bottom of it, and, it's, and it is just about at the end of the film, too, but it looks like we are done, and I'm about to feed the rest through the printer. Oh, there it go. It pushed out. Okay, and I'm going to just push the button on the side to feed the rest through. Okay. And then we're gonna go bring it over to the powder. So my handy dandy assistant over here. Okay, come on, hold this. Hold it up, hold it up, hold it up. Come on. I'll okay, so this is DTF powder. Um, just, you know, we're gonna scoop some over the image here. And try not to bend it up like I'm doing. So your image, cause it, the ink is still wet. I do not have to make that part known. So the ink is still wet. So you do want to still be careful with this because the the slightest touch can damage the image and then you will have to start over. Ooh. So in this or piece of hair, just didn't want the hair to, to stick up. But I am adding the image, excuse me, the image, the powder. And we want the powder to go across um, the whole entire image. You want it to touch all of the the ink. So I'm just going to add a little bit more the, the ink here. All right. And I think it's touched enough. All of the powder is there. Turn it. Show him. So again, I am, I have a 15 by 15 heat press. As we mentioned before, there is a little bit of um, space in between the top of this heat press and the drawer itself. So I'm just gonna slide it in here. I'm gonna press start 
and we're going to give it a 200 second um, timer here. 200 seconds, you know, 60 seconds is about, is one minute. So we're sitting here about three minutes and 20 seconds here. Hopefully you're not going to hate me <laughs> before we uh, finish through. So there we go. We got that timer going through. I am going to use a shirt that I had left over from a previous order. So we're gonna go ahead and use this bright red shirt here. And again, the image that we're working with is only white and black. Um, so it's not gonna really be hard, even if I did use vinyl, it would have shown. If I would have used, um, you know, like EcoSolvent, it would have shown. Um, obviously, if to do sublimation, sublimation would not have worked because there is no white to show through. Um, the black probably would have, you know, pressed onto it, but it would not have submitted or, um, you know, stayed, uh, into the ink. So, well, I'm sorry. I'm just over here trying to get this sticker off without putting my phone down. We have about two minutes left for that curing process. And from there, we will, um, do this shirt here. I'll have my little handy dandy assistant hold the phone. When we get to that part, We're almost there. And I do thank y'all for rocking with me, staying with me um, throughout this process. Again, this is my first live on TikTok. I've gone live on Facebook a few times, but this is different. I don't know who any of you people are, but I do thank you for joining on. I don't see anybody that I do recognize, but this is really what's up. And I hope that um we can do this more often. I really do. I want to start... Um, having a community, you know, and, and joining through. I've worked so hard to get so many followers. So it is really great to know that, um, you know, that y'all are here watching, watching with me. Okay, we got 75 seconds left after this 75 seconds. And honestly, it probably is already done, but I do want to stick to the 200 seconds, you know, time frame. I know I'm on a, a live and I may be on a, feels like a time constraint since I have people watching and, and waiting, but I do appreciate, um, you know, this, this going on, you know, and you being here with me. Can you, let's close this up. And I am, um, just real quick, since we've already done all that in the process of turning off your printer, you do want to turn off the power button in the front first. And once you kind of stop hearing the, you know, do is running. Then you want to turn off the main power switch in the back. You don't want to turn off the switch in the back first because that's the main power source and it's going to completely cycle everything out and you don't, well, turn everything off and power it off and you don't want to um, do that to mess it up. Now, I can't give you the official reasons for what it does if you turn off the main power switch before, you know, the, the simple power, but either way, the instructions say front to back. <laughs> And the same way when you turn it on, you're going to turn the back on and then the front. You're not going to turn the main one on because you can't, obviously, if you don't turn the main power source on. It sounds like that timer is done. I'm going to turn this off in the meantime. And then we are going to go ahead and start off with these, uh, with this shirt. I am just going to pull this out. Uh-huh, I know. Thank you. My, my little helper told me I don't have y'all flipped yet. And you're right. All righty. So as you see here, we went ahead, we did the, the image. It went under there, it's cured. I am going to lift my heat press. Please excuse all my little thread and stuff. I am um, venturing over to sewing. <laughs> So it is something that I am, um, I have all over the place at the moment, <laughs> but okay. Anyway, I am turning down the timer on my, um, on my heat press just to bring it back down. I do my DTFs at 315 for, um, 15 seconds for the first press and then 15 seconds again for the second press without the film over it. So again, we was just changing that. I do apologize for any squeakiness. That's definitely not what I'm trying to do. Good evening to you, J9 Customs. Hey, I was able to see somebody write something. Ha ha. I am simple. Please don't pay me no mind. I'm just happy that I'm able to do this this evening. And as you see, again, as I said before, I had um 
my heat press was um, loosened up so that I can slide that film under there without um, any issues. I, I know some people have OCD and they tend to get upset when they see people's uh, <laughs> heat press on my shirt. Um, this is how I do my shirts. I know some people can eyeball it, but Lord knows I have tried to eyeball it quite a few times and I have whew, did some crooked shirts. <laughs> I won't even sit here and lie to you that I have done some crooked shirts before because I'm not in the business of eyeballing. So I've just gotten to the point of doing the extra little step, which is putting that center crease into my shirt just so I just have a guideline to know where the middle of my shirt is at. Um, this is a medium. Oh, I lied. Oh, I lied. It's an extra large. It's an extra large. Um, as you may know, when doing shirts, um, the collar's here. So you want to do about three finger lengths, three inches from the collar to the, um, to where you're going to put the design at, which is about here for me. So I'm just going to go ahead and move my shirt up just so that I know I'm at about three inches above and I don't want to mess it up there. Um, before somebody tell me I ain't lint roll my shirt, yes. Let's go for, hold up, please. Ooh, let's just squash it back. Excuse me. Thank you. Ooh. I'm cold. Okay, one more time. Thank you. Sorry. Okay, so I don't have, uh, um, well, I don't have, oh, no, I lied. Hey, look at that. Look at God. All right, so I found my lint roller. I was getting ready to tell you I didn't have it, and I was getting ready to use some transfer um, tape, per se, just to go old school and put that tape over my shirt. But I found my lint roller. So DTF, I mean, any type of shirt making, you really do want to just go ahead and roll your lint roller over your shirt. Try to remove any loose debris that you may not see. This way, when you press down that that lint or does not get under your DTF, your eco solvents, your <laughs> sublimation, it does not ruin your design. I have to be honest about that. I've done that too. But I mean, if we haven't done it with trial and error before, why not, right? I am not afraid to say I have learned with trial and error. Oh, Miss Gonzalez, we miss you. Thank you. I know that one. Hey. All righty. So as you see, our design ain't no family like the one I got. Whew. Ain't nothing like these wards. Tell us, baby. <laughs> right? Ain't no family like the one I got. Yes, even though it's film, even though it's protective, I am going to go ahead and add the um, Teflon sheet. Now, this is DTF. And no, you do not need to add butcher paper. Why do I add butcher paper? I add butcher paper because the top of my heat press has gone through some things and I do not want to damage my shirt because of the top of my heat press. So yes, even in DTF, I will go ahead and add um, butcher paper to protect my shirt. 15 seconds, 315, simple 15 seconds. With DTF, there is... Um, a cool peel, which means we have to let the shirt cool off before we can peel this transfer off. This transfer, if it's still hot, will peel off. It will mess up. But if you give it the time to cool off, that transfer, that film will, will just come right off. The image will stay. So as you see, I pressed for 15 seconds with a Teflon sheet. Obviously, we use the butcher paper too, but I just tend to, I tend to just kind of loosen it up. I try to loosen it up. <laughs> Thank you. Hit my little camera lady. I try to let some air through it. Give it a chance to just, you know, release some of the heat that's trapped in between the shirt under this DTF on this mat that's technically still hot. Not burning hot because obviously I was able to touch it, but we're just trying to release some of this heat off this DTF so that we can um, go forward. I did see some people have a cooling block. I don't have the cooling block, but we will, let's see if it's able and ready. 
Oh, there we go. You watching? Okay. We are peeling. Uh oh. Let's see if I come up this way. Got a little stuck there. All right. Look at that. Ain't no family like the one I got. Now with DTF, just to make sure that this picture is locked in, I am going to add the Teflon sheet one more time, just for another 15 second press. Again, butcher paper is my personal preference, just to make sure that <clears throat> the top of my heat press or my heat press itself does not damage the shirt. 15 seconds. And we will be done. All right, let's count it out. Five, four, three, two, one. All right. Let's move my book of paper. Let's move this, uh oh, this Teflon. And our shirt is made, and it is hot and sticky. There we go. Ain't no family like the one I got. I think these are the family reunion shirts of 2023. So if you are interested in the ain't no family like the one I got shirt, then you are more than welcome to come through. I, I sell my shirts at $25 a pop. Um, but as you see, I do sell DTF transfers. Um, I guess I will be putting this on my Shopify website, craftykitablinks.com. And I can sell the transfer to you. I'm selling my transfers, um, custom transfers, $8 for the uh, eight by tens. And we have $10 for the um, 11 by 17s. But as I also showed you, that is a 12 by 16. Um, as many designs or images that I can get on that one um, on that one film, I will definitely go ahead and do so. Um, just contact me. I mean, I am new to this, but I am willing and I'm ready to go ahead and, and do things. I will send you an official invoice. I'm not just out here throwing cash apps at you and you know you will have an official invoice. You will have an official receipt from a website. Um, so if you're interested, DTF transfers, just go to my website, Crafty Keto Banks. Blanks, look up custom DTFs and there is the option there. There is not yet an option to upload an image. So um, you would just have to contact me um, through the email or customer service website that it sends you to. But either way, we can get some uh, custom DTFs there as you watch through with me. As you see, um, the process does not take but so long. It came out. I didn't have to weed anything. Um, it wasn't a long process. And literally, if you're ordering DTFs, all you have to do is press the minute you get them. Um, I appreciate all of you joining in this evening. I appreciate you watching my live. Again, this was my first live ever on TikTok. Um, and it's not going to be my last. There will be many more. Um, I don't know when yet, <laughs> when I get the courage to come back to you. But again, I thank you for joining with me this evening. Peace and blessings. And again, Crafty Kita is here. Love y'all. Peace out.